the last time that you failed or felt inadequate or did something poorly, how did you handle that situation? Where did you react? How did you start talking to yourself? Did you start criticizing yourself, cutting yourself down? Did you get overly ego inflated and blame other people for your problems? Well, today's reading is all about bringing some insight and skillfulness to how we relate to our mistakes, how we relate to the things that we want to improve upon in our lives, and to do that more effectively using some stoic wisdom here from the Ryan Holiday daily stoic reading book okay my name is mike stroh this is the starts with me channel please support us on patreon in the description there's a link uh, like comment subscribe all that kind of stuff please i i would admi- I appreciate that i'm a therapist i'm a meditation teacher i'm in long-term recovery from addiction and i am here to help you increase your capacity for resilience and well-being And if you've been following along the series, we are reading from the Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday, as I mentioned, and we're reading July, excuse me, we are reading June 28th. I should slow down a bit. June 28th, no self-flagellation needed. Philosophy calls for simple living, but not for penance. It's quite possible to be simple without being crude. Seneca, moral letters. 5.5. 5.5. Marcus Aurelius's, I should say, Marcus's meditations are filled with self-criticism, and so are the writings of other Stoics. It's important to remember, however, that that's as far as it goes. There was no self-flagellation, no paying penance, no self-esteem issues from guilt or self-loathing. You never hear them call themselves <laughs> worthless pieces of crap, nor do they ever starve or cut themselves as punishment. Their self-criticism is constructive. Laying into yourself, unduly depriving yourself, punishing yourself, that's self-flagellation, not self-improvement. No need to be too hard on yourself. Hold yourself to a higher standard, but not an impossible one. And forgive yourself if and when you slip up. So much wisdom in that. I love this. I'm going to take a slightly different angle, if you will. I'm going to take a self-compassion angle here, which, in my opinion, is what's being discussed here. Oftentimes, as I kind of mentioned in the introduction, when we fail or we do not meet up to our standards, right, or when we're trying to be something or when we make a big mistake, I made a big mistake last night at my meeting. I forgot Uh, to purchase a cake for one of the members' anniversaries. And I felt a lot of shame and guilt and remorse and did my best not to go into self-criticism here. I reminded myself that this was a mistake. I apologized to the people that I needed to apologize to. And I went about self-improvement, if you will, or going about making sure this doesn't happen the next time by being more organized and figuring out actually when my uh, service position expires so I don't have to be the cake buyer. Anyhow, that's a good example for me, right? Because of my past, my triggers, my et cetera, I tend to get really self-loathing and self-critical and feel a lot of shame when I make mistakes like that. Through the work that I've done, I certainly have come a long way and it doesn't linger for too long. And I can get into the self-improvement kind of idea and I can forgive myself. So for you, When you fail, feel inadequate, make a mistake, Uh, particularly with something that you really value, something that's important to you. How do you react? Are you self-loathing? Do you beat yourself up? Obviously, some days are better than others. Certain situations are different than others. Nevertheless, we we need to learn how to respond to those things. So how do you, right? Maybe uh, through our practices, as I'm often doing here, write down some of the things that you get really hard on yourself about. What are you criticizing yourself for? What is the nature of that self-criticism? And is it actually helping you? There's great research on the, to use an economic term, the diminishing returns of self-criticism, in this case, self-flagellation. It can occasionally provide us some motivation, some spurt of energy, some behavior activation. Although over the long term, this self-flagellation just tends to depress us sap our motivation more and more and more. And it's simply not helpful. So how might you shift that self-criticism or that self-flagellation into something a little bit more helpful? 
You don't have to pretend to be positive. You don't have to pretend to be nice and think positively. You just need to perhaps orient yourself to these things in a way that's more helpful and constructive and motivating. Yes, I screwed up. Yes, I didn't do this the way I want to do it. And here's what I'm going to do differently moving forward. Write that down. See how it goes. I hope you found this helpful. Please comment, like, subscribe, share, support us on Patreon, all of that good stuff. And I, I wish you all the best on your journey. Thank you for watching. Peace out. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content. And otherwise, have a great day. Peace out. <laughs>